Tax Objective 3 Problems Problem 1. What is the slope of the line? Here we need to determine the slope of the line given in the graph. We should know that two points are needed to determine the slope of the line. And two good places for points can be and are, in this case, the x-intercept and the y-intercept. The coordinates for the x-intercept are negative 2, comma, 0, and the coordinates for the y-intercept are 0, comma, negative 3. We should know or read from our formula chart that the formula for the slope of the line is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We're going to let the x-intercept, negative 2 comma 0, be x2 and y2, and the y-intercept, 0 comma negative 3, will be x1 and y1. Next, we place the values in the slope formula, and they are 0 minus negative 3 over negative 2 minus 0 and that becomes 3 over negative 2 which equals negative 3 over 2 and that is our answer C another way we could find the slope or check it is with the use of the graphing calculator we press stat and then enter for edit enter the two points in our L1 and L2 which are negative 2 comma 0 and 0 comma negative 3 we find the linear equation of the line containing these points by pressing stat arrow once to the right to get to the calc submenu arrow down to 4 linear regression press enter once press enter again we see the slope of the line is negative 1.5 and that also confirms our earlier answer C which is negative 3 over 2 problem 2 a waitress writes a function to calculate her total earnings on a typical 8 hour workday the equation given is f of x equals 24 plus 0.15x. If x is the amount of money the waitress sells in food, which statement is false? Here's a function given to calculate the total earnings for an 8 hour day of the waitress. We need to determine which of these four statements is false. We evaluate each statement and do some mental mathematics to determine which statement is false. The function says $24 plus 0.15x which is 15% of x or times x and x represents the amount of sales in food. In evaluating this statement in answer A does the waitress earn 15% of her food sales in tips? Yes she does earn 15% of the food sales in tips since that's true we cross off A. Now for answer B, is it true that the waitress will not make any money unless she sells food? It looks like she will still get $24 even if her sales amount, or X, is zero. This statement looks to be false. Let's look at answer C. Is $24 at least $3 per hour on an 8 hour workday? Since it is, it's true, we cross off answer C. And finally, for answer D, is the total amount the waitress makes dependent on the food sales? Yes, it does. And that amount is represented by the variable quantity X. Since that's also true, we cross off answer D as well, which brings us back to B, the statement that looked to be false earlier, our correct answer. Problem 3. In a gardening simulation game, the number of water lilies in a pond varies directly with the water temperature. If 26 lilies grow in the pond when the temperature is 48 degrees Fahrenheit, how many lilies would you expect to grow when the water temperature is 72 degrees Fahrenheit? Here we have a simulation problem where the number of lilies in a pond varies directly with the water temperature. We should know that the equation for direct variation is y equals kx. x is our independent quantity or variable. K is our constant of variation, and Y is our output or dependent quantity or variable. We were given 26 lilies when the water temperature is 48 degrees, and we need to find how many lilies we'll have when the water is 72 degrees. So we use what we know to find out what we don't know, so 48 degrees goes here in place of X, and the 26 lilies goes in place of y. So that gives us 26 equals k times 48. To solve for k, we divide both sides of the equation by 48. 
On the right side, the 48 over 48 cancel each other to equal 1. And that simplifies to k equals 13 over 24, which is our constant. 13 over 24, that's our constant variation. So now, with that constant variation calculated, we have the direct variation equation y equals 13 24 x or times x. Now we can take the 72 and put it in for x, and that gives us 13 24 times 72. And here it is multiplied out in the calculator. And calculate out y, calculate it out y equals 39, which is our answer b. Alternatively, this problem, since we know it's a direct variation, can be set up as a proportion. x over 72 equals 26 over 48. We would get the right answer, 39 lilies, in this manner as well. Problem number four, which is the equation of a line with a y-intercept of four? We are given four linear equations as answer choices A through D and are asked which one has a y-intercept of four. We should remember that on a graphical plane, the y-intercept is found where x equals zero along the y-axis. So all we have to do is replace the x in each equation with zero. We'll start with answer choice A. That becomes four times zero plus four y equals four. And that simplifies to four y equals four. And dividing four to solve for y, we see that y equals one. And since that's not y equals 4, we cross off A because it's not the right answer. Now we go down to answer B. Substituting 0 for x, we have 0 plus 2y equals 8. And that simplifies to 2y equals 8. And dividing both sides of the equation by 2, we have y equals 4. And since that's what we need, we choose B as our right answer. One important thing to do whenever possible is to try all the answer choices and for answer C, the y-intercept is negative 4, and for answer D, the y-intercept is negative 6. So they're crossed off as well, giving us more confidence that B is the correct answer. Problem number 5. The graph below compares the decrease in altitude along the water slide to its horizontal length. Which statements best describes the slope of the graph? Again, this is a problem where we can pick two points on the graph, which we do here at the x-intercept and the y-intercept. And those points are 100 comma 0 for the x-intercept and 0 comma 60 for the y-intercept. We can use these points with the slope formula to find our answer and that formula is m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We can let the y-intercept be x1 y1 and we can let the x-intercept be x2 y2. And after substituting x1 and y1 and x2 and y2, that becomes m equals 0 minus 60 over 100 minus 0. And that simplifies to negative 60 over 100, which finally simplifies to negative 3 over 5. And that is dropping 3 feet for every 5 feet of horizontal length. And so our answer is A. We can also use our graphing calculator to find the slope. To get to this view screen, we press STAT, then ENTER. Then we enter our points in L1 and L2, just like we would in a table, 0, 60, and 100, 0. We find the equation of the line connecting these two points by pressing STAT, arrow once to the right for the CALC submenu. Then we arrow down three times to number four, linear regression, press ENTER, press ENTER again. We get a slope of negative 0.6, and from here we can figure out that the negative 0.6 is negative 3 fifths decimalized. I hope you already know this, but if not, put negative 3 divided by 5 in the home screen of the calculator and press enter. Press the math key at the left of the keypad. Press enter to turn the decimal to a fraction. Press enter again we get negative three-fifths, which, of course, confirms the answer we got earlier. This has been Tax Objective 3 Problems. Thanks for viewing.